Good morning, uh, and thank you for tuning in to uh, discuss today's topic, management of lower GI bleeds, and thank you to the SAGES Committee. I have no relevant disclosures. Lower GI bleeds can be uh, defined as any bleed, distal ligament of trites. This can pose a challenge to the clinician, mainly because the question becomes, where is the bleed coming from? And there's a lot of real estate to cover. About 30 to 40% of all uh, GI bleeds are lower GI, and of those 15% of upper GI, uh, it's the number one cause of admission in the US for GI disease. Um, and it costs a fair amount of uh, dollars. Uh, there's been an uh, increase in admissions uh, over the past uh, 20 years, mainly secondary to increasing age, as well as comorbid conditions. And 75% of patients who actually get admitted um, have predisposing medication contributions. Etiology, I like to divide into anatomical, vascular, inflammatory, neoplastic, and small bowel. Diverticulosis is the most common cause an anal rectal is the second. So please be aware of that and do a good rectal and anal exam. Initial assessment, vital signs, um, uh, and that's going to help you triage abdominal exam to make sure that the patient's abdomen is benign. Please look at the uh, anus and do a good DRE to rule out a fungating and or rectal cancer. And G-tube can be used to rule out upper GI bleed. And then early assessment of hemodynamic uh, hemodynamics is very important. Shocking index is easy to uh, obtain. Rate divided by systolic blood blood pressure. If it's greater than one, it means the patient is unstable and it's predictive of active bleeding. This can help you figure out if you're going to get a CTA versus a colonoscopy. Um, and risk stratification can be important in that you can decide what you're going to do with the patient in terms of admission, for, et cetera. You want to use criteria such as hypertension, tachycardia, ongoing bleeding, um, uh, age greater than 60, higher creatinine, or comorbid conditions tend to push you towards potentially admission and further intervention. I like the Oakland scoring system. It's a UK-based scoring system comprised of seven variables. Uh, it's supposed to predict outcomes for outpatient management and are limited in predicting poor outcomes, but it's a nice, nice way to look at someone who comes into the ER, and if then the score is less than or equal to eight, it's 95% probability of safe discharge. Uh, now, having said that, uh, also, uh, what's the data on transfusions? This is all based on upper GI data, but we can extrapolate that to lower GI. You want to have a transfusion threshold less than seven rather than nine. Randomized clinical trials have shown that it has improved survival and less with bleeding rates. However, with patients who have comorbid conditions, consider giving transfusions great, uh, less than nine. In terms of management of uh, coagulopathies, uh, the American College of Gastroenterology guidelines based on very low quality evidence dictates that reversal agents be used for INR greater than 2.5. And INR greater than 1.5 has been a predictor of mortality, but not rebleeding, mainly because most likely these are just secondary to comorbidities. Masses of resuscitation follow the trauma guidelines. And then when you're talking about uh, targeted specific anticoagulations, it can be very challenging. Half-lives can be anywhere between five to 19 hours. Remember, you can use activated prothrombin complex concentrate. Remember, the lab data is not usually going to be predictive of what's happening in the patient's body. And for life-threatening bleeding, ask for help and call hematology. Diagnostic workup colonoscopy can be very helpful. It can be therapeutic and diagnostic. Uh, remember, you want to have a water jet irrigation. You want to have a large working channel to clear food and debris. Bowel prep is recommended when feasible. Uh, irrigate all the food and the blood. Um, and always intubate the terminal ileum to rule out an upper GI source. A uh, little tidbit when we're dealing with diverticular bleeds, mainly because this is uh, the most common cause of bleeding for lower GI bleeds. You get cap technique really helps to evert the tick, and then you can use a rotating clip to clip that area and you get the blood vessels and the bleeding can stop. It can be very satisfying. With regards to CTA versus colonoscopy as an initial assessment. You can do that for patients who have a shot index greater than one, just to figure out where it's going, uh, where the bleeding is coming from. Uh, it can be fairly predictive when it's a uh, brisk bleed, 0.3 cc's to 0.5 cc's per minute. Shock index is greater than one, and you've needed more than five units of PRBCs within 24 hours. Um, and you wanna get a three-phase um, CT. 
Uh, and geography can be helpful uh, if you figured out where the bleeding is, if they're brisk and they're continuing, the success rates can be very high. The ischemia rates are very low, less than 3%. And again, if the patients have required more than five units, they have a high shock index, um, they, there is good technical uh, success. The question really becomes, when do we operate on these patients? Um, obviously, if they have ischemic colitis, patients with ulcerative colitis, and colon cancers that are not invading other adjacent structures are easy answers. Um, for rectal cancers, uh, remember radiation is an option um, and this should be presented at uh, multidisciplinary tumor board if possible uh, um, before you do radiation and both short course and long course can help uh, in uh, depending on your institutional uh, standards. And APC can be used to um, temporized colorectal cancer bleeding. Um, and you want to figure out where it's bleeding from before you go to the OR. So you want to rule out upper GI and you want to rule out small bowel sources. If you're having continuous bleeding, continued transfusion, and you've ruled these out, then a subtotal colectomy is and can be warranted. Rebleed rates after this is about 4%. It's better than a total colectomy. There have been studies in the 1990s um, subtotal versus total versus segmental. And I think with better technology, we're just getting better at localizing it. And if you can, and the patient continues to bleed a subtotal colectomy with or without an ileostomy, depending on the hemodynamics of the patient is uh, okay to do. Uh, when you're in the OR, remember to run the bowel to rule out any palpable lesions that potentially were not picked up in imaging. Intraoperative enteroscopy is helpful in those patients who you ruled out the colon and perhaps you see bleeding in the small bowel, but not from the stomach. Um, the yields can be high, but the rebleeding rates are fairly high as well, around 60%. And if it's negative, you have to, again, consider a subtotal colectomy uh, and you have to have these discussions with the patients that they may bleeding and uh, they may continue to bleed. The surgical decision for GI bleeds is, is incredibly difficult. However, with the new modalities that we have, um, uh, it can, uh, you, you can potentially avoid the operating room. Uh, thank you. Please email me with any questions. Uh,